15 is a special day in the annals of Nigeria's nationhood. It is a day set aside to honor the nation's fallen heroes who paid the supreme price while defending the country's corporate entity from wars, insurrections, and other forms of aggressions, whether internally or externally. No doubt, the armed forces of any nation have to be seen and recognized as pivotal to the country's security. There can be no gain saying the fact that the history of our great country is incomplete without mentioning the contributions and impacts of members of the armed forces in this regard, given the massive fatalities and disablements which had been recorded in the throes of wars and insurgency. This is why the day has been chosen every year to bring to the fore the immense sacrifices of the nation's heroes, dead or living, by whose sweat and blood the nation's territorial integrity and continuity are sustained. In this year, like previous ones, Ogun state governments joined the federal and other state governments, along with well-meaning citizens of the country, to remember these great heroes and veterans, along with their families, on the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. For the state governor, Prince Dakbo Abiodun, leading top government officials and other dignitaries to a solemn ceremony where Catholic, Protestant and Islamic prayers were said by the brigade chaplains of both the Roman Catholic and Protestant communities as well as the brigade imam of the 35 Artillery Brigade at Lamala Abe Okuta. We ask that you pray, keep and continue to bless everyone that are here and we pray for the men and the women who serve in our armed forces that we continue to help them to secure and to defend the commonwealth of our dear country. This is our prayers with thanksgiving to Jesus Christ our Lord. Father Lord, we commit the people of Ogun State into your hands. Father Lord, continue to guide and protect them. Continue to grant them their heart desires that this year, 2022, would be a year of favor and breakthrough for the people of Open States. This and many more we ask through Christ our Lord. O oh Allah, we place our dear nation Nigeria before you. We pray unto you to protect and save us from the impunity of charlatans. Save us from the plot of all evil plotters against our dear nation. O oh Allah, grant all our leaders at all levels with divine wisdom, zeal and enablement with which to pardon the affairs of our nation to the glorious height. O oh Allah, return peace and tranquility to our dear nation Nigeria. O oh Allah, keep us away from all internal and external aggressions unrest, fear, and as well as panic. O oh Allah, we have no any place other than this nation, Nigeria. Grant us and all our households tranquility and succor therein. All this we ask in the mighty name of Allah. The event was held at the arcade ground of the governor's office in Ok Mosan, where the governor had an arrival mounted the podium to inspect the parade. <laughs> After was a series of events and customs which were carried out in keeping with the tradition of the day's commemoration. First in line was the conventional wreath laying led by the state governor, Prince Dakbo Abiodun. Following after were service chiefs, state chairman, Nigerian Legion, the four paramount rulers in the state, speaker of the state house of assembly, the state chief judge, and the representative of the widows and families of the slave members and other veterans of the armed forces. This was followed by the rebel.
Also in keeping with tradition, the state governor released 20 white pigeons, symbolizing peace in each of the 20 local government areas of the state. A 21-gun salute was released to honor the fallen heroes. <laughs> And finally, Governor Abiodo mounted the dares for the national salute. A mission sorted and graciously granted by His Excellency. The solemn event was rounded off with a march out parade. Meanwhile, Muslim and Christian Thanksgiving services had been organized as part of activities marking the annual event. Speaking at the St. Peter's Cathedral at K. Abeokuta during the Thanksgiving service, the Ogun State Governor, Prince Dakbo Abiodun, reminisced the genesis of the celebration. The Armed Forces Remembrance Day, from accounts, used to be called the Poppy Day. It was hitherto celebrated on the 11th of November every year worldwide alongside with war veterans of different wars, particularly the First World War. But after our victory, when we defeated the Biafrans on January 15, 1970, the celebration was replaced by what we are now doing today and that um, to commemorate you know, the defeat of of the Biafrans. It is a day that has been set aside to celebrate our heroes who have fallen in the line of duty either during external conflicts or during peacekeeping missions or even internal conflicts as they sought to protect us against insurgents which have become very rampant and militants. These men and women enlisted in the armed forces. They enlisted knowing that their job description is to protect us from external and internal aggression. Governor Abiodun appreciated the patriotic and heroic hearts of the armed forces and said that the heroes should be given all the assistance needed for their efforts to keep the nation at peace at all times. These men and women have laid their lives for this country there can be no better act of patriotism. Some of them have lost their lives. They've left behind spouses. They've left behind children. It is indeed noble to set aside a day such as this to represent and to, to celebrate them. However, I believe that to really celebrate them will be to go beyond a day celebration because many of us will come here today and soon after we leave church or after we gather on January 15 we are done with it we have forgotten them it's important that we continue to remember them every day by supporting their spouses and children and like the Pope said it's important to ensure that the entitlements are paid on time while they are living. 
But more importantly, one sure way of appreciating and remembering them is to continue to do everything to ensure peace across our country. He said Ogun State has been adjudged the most peaceful state in the country, reiterating his commitment to support all security outfits in the state towards maintaining the peaceful coexistence amongst the citizens. Today, our state, Ogun State, is adjudged as the most peaceful state in this country. It has not been by accident. It has been by a lot of hard work, grace of God, and being deliberate. Sometime in the next 10 days or thereabouts, we will be launching the newly reconsidered OP Mesa to further ensure that we have peace and we ensure that we have security across the length and breadth of the state. OP Mesa, we have all the men and women of our law enforcement architecture. You know that in the Yoruba part of our state, we had the special joint intervention squad, which we specifically set up to immediately address the issue of our farmers, herders, and the incursion from outside the country. And we have since been able to stabilize that part of our state. We've also put in place our own Amotecon. They've also been able to complement our law enforcement architecture. The Cathedral Provost, the Very Reverend Dr. Isaac Adeniji, in his sermon titled, Heroes of Faith are Strength, with reference text, from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 32 to 40, likened the armed forces personnel to the Israelites who were called by God and commissioned for a special assignment to save their people. Adding that the heroes must be celebrated because they take risks to keep the country together. Heroes of faith are our strength. They are people of God. Today shall we not be able to Thank God for the life of the armed forces people of Nigeria in one hand and by extension, the old world. It takes our mind so quickly the efforts of armed forces people during the first world war. It came to our mind very quickly the efforts of the uniform people during the second world war. He noted that the armed forces have taken the oath of allegiance to protect the nation and therefore urge the people and government to always remember the fallen heroes' families. Heroes of faith are our strength. What must we do as citizens? Number one is to constantly pray for the souls of our brothers and sisters who die in obedience to their calling and profession. Those who volunteer to die for the rest of us to have peace. Number two, to always remember the families of these heroes of ours, let the hand but care for them, but so that their children, their wives, and more importantly, the education of these heroes' children to see that they are educated or else they become a constitution in Nigeria. And number three, that government should pay the pension and gratitude of these heroes on time. Not until when they die, they look for the uh, uh, second person to come and sign for them. Prayers were later offered for the nation, the families of fallen heroes, and thanksgiving offered to God on their behalf.
Kiswahili. Lord, in your mercy, deliver us, O Lord. Also, a Jumat service was held at the Central Mosque, Kobiti Abeokuta, where the state governor, Prince Dakbo Abiodun, was represented by his deputy, engineer Mrs. Noimot Salako Oyedene, who affirmed that the labor of the past heroes in promoting peace, as stated in the national anthem, should not be in vain adding that the present administration is committed to improving the socio-economic development of the state through the Isheya mantra. The essence of this uh, remembrance, this annual remembrance, is captured in a national anthem. Um, so the labors of our heroes past must never be in vain. We all know that the peace we enjoy today is a result of the sacrifice of our previous leaders and also of our service men and women who have laid down their lives for the integrity of this country. And we have to continue to remind ourselves of what has gone past, to serve as a remembrance of those who have lost and to honor them, but also to admonish us on the way forward and to make sure that each of us takes a collective responsibility for the unity and integrity of this country very seriously and to know that in each and every act that we do we have a part to play in, in what this country becomes in the future and that we can have a united nigeria to leave to future generations the army have their role or the armed forces in general have their own role to play we as politicians and leaders we also have our role to play and that is why His Excellency is committed to developing a, a state such that the state is a haven for all our citizens. We know that uh, insecurity is bred by hopelessness and the fear of the unseen and the fear of the future. And that is why His Excellency has put in place policies to make sure that we put our state in a way that we can improve the socio-economic well-being of all our citizens so that they are hopeful, so that they believe in the collective unity of this country and the development of this country. His Excellency's vision is based on the Ishaya mantra and uh, this is a short remark where we will not have to go through every single thing that uh, His Excellency has done. A lot of them we all know but we, we have to go for Juma. But His Excellency has put in place this uh, policy of the share where we have split up the development uh, agenda under the themes of infrastructure, social development, education, youth empowerment and job creation and also agriculture so that we can create opportunities for all our youth, for our, our men and our women to make sure that in this state people are in a better place, they have hope for the future and are also able to work together with the government to make sure that the state is secure and well and that we look forward to a better uh, Nigeria. In his welcome address, the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Alaji Abduwahidu Dushile, said the essence of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day was to remember the fallen heroes who laid down their lives to have an entity called Nigeria. It is good to remember a fallen hero because they laid down their lives for us to have a nation called Nigeria today. We all know what we went through as a nation for the sacrifices of these appalling people have kept us together. And we owe it a duty to them and the country to ensure that Nigeria remain a united entity. So that, like in the words of our national term, the labors of our youth's past shall not be in vain. Let us do our own best to keep Nigeria together so that generations coming after us will also meet the United Nigeria as handed over to us by our own predecessors. It is a duty all of us must give to this nation. The guest lecturer 
Sheikh Mufutsau Amolegbe at the chat with the Giant Strikes crew. This is to remember our um, armed forces, uh, those that have laid their life for the benefit of others to live. So that is the reason why we are uh, celebrating today. My advice to the government is to keep on uh, remembering all these people. Most of them, those that have laid down their life for the benefit of us. So by giving their children uh, free education right from the primary school to tertiary institution, as you know, that is forcing. So it is very, very important. And those that have wounds, eh, they have injury. So make sure that the government should take care of them so properly. And those that are suffering now, the government should uh, promote them at when due. We also caught up with traditional rulers, widows of the fallen heroes, the state chairman, Nigerian Legion in the state, and other stakeholders and they bore their minds on the significance of the day as well as their expectations moving forward. It's not just Juma service. Like it's written, it's a special Juma service because of the special people that they are trying to organize the program for. Those that stood by us, fought for us, for Nigeria to be in unity. And some of us pay the supreme price I'm one of the luckiest ones to still be alive. Those that have paid the supreme price, they have uh, widows that they left behind. They have dependents, the aged ones too. We have to look after them. That is why the federal government did me fit to establish what is called Nigeria Legion so that we can be able to bring ourselves together and uh, the spirit of Esprit de Corps that is used during difficult uh, period while in the service we still continue. As it is stated in the national anthem that the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. The honors rest on Nigerians home and in the diaspora to ensure that the heroes who have worked assiduously and continue to work hard to keep the nation together in peace and harmony are honored and celebrated by all as we strive to ensure that the nation's flag keeps flying and we remain patriotic in our daily dealings so that at the very least the supreme sacrifice paid by those who have laid their lives for our existence and survival do not die in vain. Igbega Ikmineogu Ajoshe Bubuani.